Probably the most significant story of the past few days has been the bizarre story of the firing of uh, Berman. Je Jeffrey Berman, U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Started on Friday. It's taken several days to get an idea of what is actually going on. We knew from the first moment that this was corruption, but exactly what form? So it started, we've got Trump firing Berman. Now this happens after Berman refuses to step down after Bill Barr attempted to oust him. And so if you watch this in real time, what you saw was a statement put out by the AG saying that Berman was going to resign, to which Berman responded socially, I never said I was going to resign and I'm not going to. Then Barr goes to Trump, get, gets Trump to fire Barr, to which once, uh, to, to fire Berman, once Berman had gotten assurances somehow that the person he wanted to replace him would at least temporarily replace him, he accepted that he would step down. Then Trump denied that he had been the one to fire him and said it was all Barr's decision, even though Barr can't unilaterally fire him, it would have been Trump. So the entire thing is a massive mess. But what we do know is that as of right now, there is no non-corrupt reason that Berman was pushed out in this fashion. The question really is, which particular corruption is this? Why did they push him out? Francesca, as you were watching this develop, uh, what did you make of the entire thing? I mean, it's the same thing we keep seeing with this administration is they fire every anyone who's investigating them. Inspectors generals have been fired. Inspectors general have been fired. Uh, oversight of the uh, stimulus money um, for uh, all different kinds of things. And I hate that sort of middling NPR questioning of like, can he do this? Is this like legal? He <laughs> did. He did. Uh, William Barr is his personal watchdog. He's doing it. Anyone who's investigating Giuliani, Ukraine, uh, anything that has happened with his former uh, staffers, campaign staffers, whether um, that's uh, Manafort or um, not Cohen, obviously Cohen, you know, he sang like a canary, but like <laughs> anyone else, they're, they're, they're going after. And so my question going forward truly is if, if this president is in office or not is what can we do about it? What happens when your Justice Department is compromised? Mm -hmm. Do you just throw your hands up or do we have another um, sort of stopgap measure, a safety valve that can be put into place when you have something like this? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's the weeding out that we've seen uh, throughout this year, often sort of a secondary or tertiary story. It's not usually the like the biggest news story. But gradually, the inspectors general being weeded out, they're turning on the attorneys, too. You had Michael Atkinson, intelligence community inspector general, yes. um, involved in the whistleblower complaint that led to uh, impeachment. Uh, Steve Linick, who was apparently investigating uh, Mike Pompeo for potentially a number of different things, all of them incredibly dirty. With Berman, it's really just a question of what was it that he was investigating or had investigated that led to him being ousted? There's no, he just was terrible at his job and so it was time to, for him to be pushed on. In fact, apparently, uh, before he was sort of forced to resign, Barr apparently offered him other positions, like potentially heading up the SEC or something like that, which is not what you do when a person is utterly incompetent. It's what you do when you want to get them out of that position and hopefully get them to go quietly, by the way. But he had apparently been involved in some cases involving Turkish President uh, Erdogan. He had also been involved in the investigation into Giuliani and Ukraine. And as you pointed out, Cohen as well. Although I believe he personally um, recused himself from that case, but his office was involved in it. So it could have been retaliatory. It could have been to stop one of the investigations that's going on right now. What's really bizarre is... He's a donor to Trump's campaign and a former colleague of Rudy Giuliani. Now, I understand he's a New York attorney. That doesn't necessarily mean that they were best friends or anything like that. But it's not like this guy is some stereotypical Trump hater. And still, the fact that he might have been willing to do his job looks like it was enough for him to get pushed out. And look, this looks bad for Barr. And I know people were saying, look, Barr should be forced out or something like that. To which, um, I think it was, was it Nadler who was like, What's the point? We could try to get rid of him, but the Senate's never going to allow it, which, my, like, can we just take a moment and recognize how awesome our system of government is? That, like, the AG could be utterly corrupt, but 
eh, Mitch McConnell's corrupt too, so what are you going to do about it? Um, yeah. Yeah, but that seems to be where we're at. Absolutely. I mean, and this is like what I really hope we don't see going forward. I, mean, I on the press, we have to, you know, get Trump out of office. But I and I think this is where, you know, progressives can really put our pressure on is that we need to hold everyone accountable. I don't want any of this like post George W. Bush, you know, uh, all water under the bridge type mm -hmm. stuff when it comes to, you know, human rights violations in Iraq or Afghanistan. You know, I know Obama wanted to move forward and beyond that. Like, no, we're not moving forward. All these corrupt fools need to be held accountable for it. And yeah, lock them up if need be. Like, I'm I am tired because if you do not hold folks accountable, it will keep happening again and again and again. All these clowns, all this cast of clowns, they will come back. You think they won't if we vote him out? They'll come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, look at Barr. Barr was yes, wreaking havoc in the in 90s. And then, you know, he gets forced out and, he, you know, he bides his time and, you know, Seinfeld comes and goes and <laughs> other shows. Come. That's how I mark time. And like, but, but I say that, like huge spans of time come and go. Multiple Star Trek series. But then mm. he comes back because he's still there. John Bolton came back, even though apparently he had, you know, been, you know, Trump didn't respect him. He still hired him. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I have the same fear. I mean, getting rid of the inspectors general, now trying to weed out anyone in these investigative bodies in the states, so corrupt. And and it's it's what I've been saying for a few months now. Like, like we, we spent Trump's first term talking about all of the corrupt and illegal acts that were revealed to us. The second term, we're going to be silent because we're not even going to know about the corruption. We're not going to know about the crimes. Um, anyway. I really hope you're wrong. But I, I also think that I, I know it's hard to care about these kinds of you know government bodies because we feel like we've been let down by them for so long and that they don't actually um, take up the issues that we care about. Uh, even in places like the FBI, like, or the CIA, like, I hate the FBI. Like, why don't, you know, yeah. I remember COINTELPRO. I mean, I don't actually, but I know about COINTELPRO. Like, <laughs> why do I like the FBI? But then you realize that anyone who's raised any red flags about possible um, foreign meddling and intervention has been sidelined, has been put on, like, you know, desk duty in the, you know, bottom fifth floor or whatever, lower level five, like, or, or has been completely pushed out. Like, that's, that is not the kind of intelligence agency that I would like, uh, yeah. even if I don't believe in this intelligence agency. Exactly. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.